Welcome to another episode of Weld.com. I'm doing a series of pipe welding videos on two inch schedule 80. And I wanna do one where it's kind of an entry level thing, really, really basic, but it's to build confidence. It's to start out and, and get going on this, build confidence. So we're gonna weld in quarters, real easy stuff. We'll start over here about three o'clock, weld up to the top. We'll stop, do the same thing. It's to get used to running in the, in the groove, in the round. Multiple ways to hold on to the torch. Uh, one of the methods we could use would be to just wiggle the cup, walk the cup up. Another method would be to hold the torch and put our fingers against a prop and free hand it up there. You could put a, th a thumb against here. I don't recommend that. I like using the thumb on bottom. So we can stick with the simple stuff that works here and use the fingers to prop. But again, we're just kind of welding in quarters. What this does is <clears throat> it allows you to see up here and watch your root go in. It also is gonna train you on multiple restarts. Okay, a lot of times when we'll start on the bottom of a piece of pipe, we may not have to stop until we get to the top, depending on where our tacks are and if we run into trouble. So this will allow you to do multiple restarts. Uh, we have a product here by Ferd. It's a thin cutoff wheel. It's actually designed for doing this, and I may go in. I've already done it to my, I used two tacks to put in here. So we'll go in and we'll feather our starts and stops. So let's get a ground clamp. Get a hood on, we'll get going. My recipe today, I'm gonna run off of an Everlast 161 STH. I'm gonna use 90 amps, straight DC, and I'm using a feature called Live Arc. So this is electrically hot all the time. And as soon as I touch the grounded material, my gas and amperage come on for me. Almost like using a, a manual dry rig torch with a valve. However, this is a cool little feature on this machine. A minute ago, I was explaining, I had the pipe turned a little bit different, and I said we can prop fingers or we could walk the cup, and there is one other method. I, I'm going to be over here so camera guy can, can get in here and see this, but I'm going to rest the heel of my hand, kind of my forearm in here, and I'm just going to come up. I'm going to draw this. This is pretty simple. This will be a freehand method. I'll try to show all all three of what I'm talking about. Again, this is to build confidence and get going on these, uh, these pipe welds. Small bore pipe welds are a little more difficult than the large bore ones are. Two inch schedule 80, 90 amps, straight DC, E3 tungsten. I forgot to mention my prep, a standard bevel on the pipe. <clears throat> I reached inside before I did anything after the bevel and cleaned the inside with a stone. And then I went to this poly V combi block where it's a, it's a flapper wheel, it cuts and it buffs and I just kind of sanded the face to get the plasma cut off of it. I barely put a 30 second of face on there and that's really to knock out the burr that was on the face of it. So essentially I'm running feathered edge. I have a loose 1 16th. This filler wire is a 3 30 second will not go into my gap. So I have a couple of options here. I'm, I'm kind of just balancing the wire on the leading edge of the pool and rolling it when it's this tight of a gap. To me, that was kind of soft. I may need an amperage change. The first thing I'm going to do is look at this. I have a flashlight. I'm going to look through the gap and it's okay. It's in there. I came off of the tack where I had thinned it out, feathered it. I broke the edges down and I have some reinforcement. <clears throat> when I came up here to I welded from about three o'clock, came off the tack. I came up here to the top and it's kind of snapped out of it. Some of you've had some really good comments about taking the wire 
slightly away from the weld and snapping out of it and let the arc crawl up the filler wire and I'll do that on the next one. Right now, I don't really need to, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this just a little bit. It does have a slight keyhole to it, but it also has a little speck of uh, silica deposit on it. Slight keyhole, doesn't, I really don't need to cut it open, but I'm going to. If, uh, I, may, I could probably get it out of there with a hand wire brush. Let me try to do that first before we commit to the... Oh, that's just perfect right there. Look at that. So I got it out of there. I have a keyhole and I can remelt it. So I'm not worried about it. Cool product. Wire brush with the bristles all pointed into the center of it. Got right down in the groove. Okay, so now you know, again, we're doing this for confidence. This is confidence builder. So this is like a rollout weld. I'm gonna turn this over here. I'm gonna start on the side and come up to this feathered tack and stop. But I am gonna increase my amperage by five. So I'll go up to 95 amps. So <clears throat> I did two quarters and I did them by hanging on to the torch and putting the heel of my hand against the pipe and I just freehanded and came up like this, okay? So now, and I'm running a number five cup, which is small enough to kind of rest in here. So on this one, I don't know if I can do this and get the camera guy in here or not. I may have to let me experiment here. I'm sitting in a V-block, so uh, this might be a short run. I'll just have to come over the top a little bit if I'm gonna be a, in a quarter. I've gotta miss this down here. So now I'm gonna rest the cup in the groove here. And this is something else to practice on, especially when you're coming off the bottom of a pipe. Some some people like to just rest the cup and just wiggle it and walk it all the way. Yet another method. So I'm gonna start over here on my, on my tack that I've already fused into. Get past my two gnarly marks that are in the pipe, rest this in the groove and wiggle it all the way up, leaving the wire on the leading edge. Okay, yet another method. Coming off the tack, warming it up slightly. Add a little fill of wire, come up a little bit. Look like it fell in. running 100 amps now and I need it all. When I terminate the arc, I try to go over on a pipe wall on the face of it a little bit, long arc it just a little bit and let the weld cool down and then snap out of it. I do need to get into this one and cut it slightly. And before I do anything else, I wanna shine a light in there and check that one and see I'm real certain it went in, but I want to double check for you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we got, we've got a root going in there. Those small bore pipes are kind of hard to check your progress. You know, again, this is a confidence builder. When you get done with the whole weld, you can go take and chop right next to the weld and you can inspect internally. You don't want to waste material. A lot of times we'll plasma cut right next to the weld, rebevel the material, carbon steel, it won't hurt it.
coming up on this tack. I'm kind of making some circles and adding wire. Making sure I fuse into that. So at this point, the root is done. Uh, I can run a mirror in there and check, but I'm pretty real confident that it went in. Again, we're doing the top quarters for confidence. And I'm gonna buff this out to get it ready for a fail pass. And uh, so I'm gonna get right up here. And that simple, that quick. This may not look like a wire wheel on camera. I don't know what it looks like on camera. To me, when you get back away from it, it looks like a black solid disc. It is actually a wire wheel. It's encapsulated. And this product keeps these wires from spitting. It also keeps them concentrated to the diameter of the wheel so that they don't flare out. It's a good product made by Ferd. I'm not trying to sell it. I'm trying to tell you it's a good product for those two features alone. So this concludes the root part of it. You know, again, this was to build confidence, to get you started, get you going. And then from there, we can get rid of the V block and get it on a fixture or even in stands. And you can go from quarters to thirds, eventually go to halves. You come off the bottom, go all the way up. Uh, you can practice doing your fill passes the same way like this and your caps. You can freehand your cap. You can freehand your field pass, you can walk. So just some options. This is to get you going. We're gonna be doing a series of uh, pipe welding demos with the two inch schedule 80. Uh, we're gonna do 5G, 2G, horizontal, 6G. So this one will get you going and get your reference back, build that confidence. Appreciate your subscription to weld.com. Thanks for watching us and supporting us over the years. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram as well.